Hello and welcome to the Kemanas Park Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we recap the race cars from the three-day race carnival where 27 races were contested over the weekend. Through to Monday, October 16, a public holiday celebrated as National Heroes Day in Jamaica. Let's begin with race 6 from Saturday. This was a Titania Trophy, a restricted allowance event for native bred fiddies 3 years old and up, going a distance of 5.5 furlongs. Champion jockey Dane Dawkins was aboard the Gary Sabrati conditioned Bella Soul. They're off and racing. Rose Apple slightly misses it and is left at the back of the field. Bosi gets a good start along with Bella Soul right there too as they go past the five. Being tracked by Shiza Murad racing in third. Then comes Shuama the Butcher right against the rail. That is the, God, the love of God overtaking the love of God. That's Maggie's trick. Then comes Bella Bella racing there then comes behind Bella Bella that is Princess Aquila about five lengths before we come to racing back there in a, that's Lady Lady Karma and racing at the back of the field as flow starting Rose Apple they're coming to the uh, top of the lane and it is Bosi on that lead being tackled on the inside by Bella Soul it's Bosi switching down on the rail Bella Soul Switching out wide, also coming on, the love of God, but it's still Bosi on that lead. Here comes the love of God, gobbling up the Bosi. It's Bosi in front, the love of God now hits the front from Bosi, coming out wide. Here comes Bella Bella on the outside, flying. It's it's the love of God, Bella Bella, coming at the love of God. It's the love of God, Bella Bella, Bella Bella, just in time from the love of God. Then comes Bosi, Bella Soul, and Lady Karma. A well-timed ride by jockey Radish Roman who continues on his good form atop the 8-5 favorite Bella Bella beating the love of God in second with Bosi, Bella Soul and Lady Karma rounding off the top 5. Race 7 on Saturday was the day's feature event run in honor of the Richard Azan trained horse of the year and the Triple Crown winner back in 2010. The favorite was the 2022 St. Ledger winner Blue Vinyl. They're off for the mark, my word. The head corner stone. Marginally slowly out, but Miniature Man misses it badly and has a lot of catching up to do as the field run into that clubhouse turn. They're into it now. And Blue Vinyl has taken charge early and gone straight to the lead and opens up some two lengths out with a chasing in second. Toward the inside, the head corner stone, right alongside, gone in the grill, and a gap to the slow starting Miniature Man yet to recover. They're about to take now to the back stretch. They do so now and make their way toward the six and blue final under a snug wrap leads up out with her a length and a half back. The head cornerstone as they leave the six moving closer in third. Gone and the grill racing back in fourth and miniature man now making up some lost ground as they race toward the final five. Blue final attempting to go all the way. Outbridder now pressing just three parts of a length down. The head cornerstone watches them from third, just two and a half to three lengths off that lead. Miniature Man is a further three and a quarter to three and a half lengths back and racing at the back of the field and beginning to fade. It's a gone and a grill as class catches up with him and the field arrive at the 716. Stable mate of Blue Vinyl striding out. Now the rider lets out a notch and Blue Vinyl slips away by some three lengths. The head cornerstone is driven to get closer. Outbidder also under the pump. Miniature Man races up next and forget gone and a grill who has missed the bus as they're coming into the top of the lane and it is Blue Vinyl in complete control under a hand ride the rider having a peep in his mirrors and blue vinyl has a clear lead the head cornerstone best of the rest miniature man has made some progress after the poor beginning outbidder races up next but it is all up in front blue vinyl leaves the furlong pole and leaves the entire field for dead it is blue vinyl opening up double digits with every stride and blue vinyl will win the mark my word trophy in complete come on come in complete control the head corner stone is second, miniature man is third, outbidder is fourth. A dominant performance by the four-year-old chestnut colt Blue Vinyl, landing a gate to wire finish and dismissing first runner up the head corner stone by 21 and a half long lengths in a time of 1 minute 54 and 2 fifths of a second. Race 8 on Saturday's card was another restricted allowance event covering a distance of 1,000 meters round. Fly Blue Jet from the Philip Fiani barn was a 6-5 favorite in the betting. They're off and racing, not a bad line. A digital light gets a flyer on the inside. Also there, that's Babla, as they're in very close in attendance. Also there, that's 
blinking light coming around as they go past the four furlong point and it's babbler just the leader from blinking light right there too digital light right there in third fly blue jet is just on the tail of those behind those that's running glory city hawk comes next then comes uh, California Gold and racing at the back of the field. That's uh, Brian Express there at the top of the lane. Babla attacked by Blinking Light out wide. Also coming on, that's Fly Blue Jet right against the rail. Digital Light coming back for more. But it's still making the running. Babla, Digital Light forging on the inside. It's Digital Light on the outside. Fly Blue Jet, Digital Light in front. Fly Blue Jet begins to come forward. Digital Light hanging on from Fly Blue Jet coming forward. Digital Light is shining bright this afternoon and will win by about four lengths from Fly Blue Jet. Then comes uh, California Gold and Babla backing forward. Tevin Foster made light work of the opposition aboard the Gary Griffith conditioned digital light, beating the likes of Fly Blue Jet, California Gold and Babla who took the fourth spot. From Sunday's race card, we continue the recap picking up at race three. This was the second running of the BGLC TOBA Hero Sprint Trophy, a maiden special weight event for native bred two year olds. Now they're off. Fair start. Run, Julie, run. Lives up to her name. She's sure running fast and grabs an early lead as they head toward the half mile. A chasing down toward the outside. That's a Francis now showing. Queen of Soul is also moving quickly, and a Queen of Soul now moves through to get a narrow lead from a run, a Julie run, just on the outside. Racing next, that's Francis in the green cap as they leave the three. Buttercup in the black cap races next, and at the back of the field, that's a blue sensation as they have left the 5-16th and will come into the lane. A Queen of Soul battling for that lead with a run, Julie run the gray on the outside. It's Queen of Soul just the leader. Run, Julie run though, refusing to quit. And these two continue the battle and run, Julie run. Now looks to pick up a slim lead. Queen of Soul will attempt the fight back under the left hand stick, but it is run, Julie run the gray filly. That is out in front. Queen of Soul continues to challenge on the inside. Run, Julie run. And Omar Walker just the leader. Queen of Soul attacking all the time run julie run may just have done it to the queen of soul uh, then francis buttercup at the back it's blue sensation six-time champion jockey omar el champo walker aboard the debutante run julie run from the ian prasad barn in a winning time of one minute one and two fifths of a second it's now time for a break on the commander's park highlight show on the other side we'll recap races from sunday october 15 and heroes day monday october 16. Welcome back to the Kimana's Highlight Show. In the second half of our presentation, we'll pick up with selected races from Sunday, October 15 and Monday, October 16. Sunday's eighth race was a restricted stakes event going 1,000 meters, a field of 11 declared to start, including the importees Desert of Malibu, Box Box, and Atlantic Convoy, expected to be the top contenders. They're off and racing. Bazinga gets a nice start in the middle. On the near side, that Atlantic Convoy and Box Box. Zing attacking across Desert of Malibu is quite prominent in the middle. Over on the far side, that is uh, Acknowledge Me and Volatility. So they're spread right across the course as they come towards, come out of the chute and come toward the uh, two furlong point. Over on the far side, that is at Acknowledge Me and uh, Volatility. Right in the middle, Desert of Malibu. Might have the overall lead right there to Bazinga, closest to us, Atlantic Convoy. They're coming to the furlong and a half pole, and it is Desert of Malibu showing them a clean pair of heel. Coming to the furlong pole, it's De Desert of Malibu. Also, their volatility running a big one, Bazinga, and closest to us, Atlantic Convoy, but they're not going to catch Desert of Malibu. It's a double four, devastating Ding Dawkins. Double Desert of Malibu beats Atlantic Convoy, rejected Raja. Bazinga, cut tight for fifth, could be volatility or box box. The talented imported desert of Malibu makes it two wins from two starts in impressive fashion, clocking a brisk 59 seconds flat over the five furlongs course. Race 9 on Sunday was a day's feature, the eighth running of the Aero Big Sub Sobrati Memorial Trophy, an overnight allowance event for three-year-olds and up, going one mile or 1,600 meters. 
But they're off. First start, hoist the mass slowly out. Mojito toward the back of the field along with positive ID. Now outsped and a left last. Rani Bangala got a good start. Gets off quickly. Leaves a seven with that lead. Big Jewel chasing. Excessive force is close up in the earlies as they charge away now toward the six. Mojito begins to pick a path between horses and is getting closer with every stride. Baby Like races up next. Hoist the mast has made good progress and recovering. Sistrin Treasure races on the rail. Possibly six lengths separates that bunch of horses. Sunset Silhouette races toward the back with a Goodrich. Classical Orb and a long way last. Positive ID looking hopeless already. The field made their way now toward the final half of a mile. They're almost there and Arani Bangala continues to show. Hoist the mass dropping down. Mojito in a handy spot if good enough. Excessive force is also well poised. There goes Big Jewel with a run. Sister and Treasure in between them. Four lengths back to Sunset Silhouette and Baby Like teaming up. The Goodwitch and Classical Orb race next as they leave the three and forget Positive ID needing a miracle as they come toward the top of the lane. They're coming into it now. Rani Bangala loose on the lead. Mojito needs to find five lengths, but it is Rani Bangala trying to escape all pursuit. Mojito trying to get on terms, but still can't touch the leader. It's Rani Bangala out in front of Furlong to run. Rani Bangala looks sound on that lead. They're not going to catch this Rani Bangala. Rani Bangala inside the final 16th upsets the apple cart, and Rani Bangala roars in to win by a huge margin. Sunset Silhouette will get second over Mojito, then Baby Like and Sister in the informed Radish Roman aboard Richard Pearson's Rani Banagala upsets the apple carts and romps home to victory, beating Sunset Silhouette and the 2000 Guineas winner, the 2 to 5 favorite Mojito. Our first review race from the Heroes Day card is Race 7, the Heroes Day Stakes Trophy. A restricted allowance event covering a distance of 8 furlongs with champion trainer Jason Acosta fielding 3 of the 8 entries. One mile the trip. Heroes Day Stakes Trophy. They're off. Gilbert dawdles in the gate and comes out at the back. Sonity and Chippy took off quickly. She's my friend attacking and she's my friend now goes on to get that lead. Sonity and Chippy racing out wide. They lead the 7. Great win on the outside of Gilbert. Select me races ahead of Delay the Game as they make their way now toward the final six. Behind Delay the Game comes Fly Messenger Fly now on the go, making mild improvement. Lana Vecati is at the back with a lot of catching up to do as the field head away toward the five. Sunity and Chippy blazing the trail with She's My Friend. They're eye to eye as they run to the half mile. A gap of maybe eight lengths or even more to Gilbert. Great Wayne is two and a half lengths in behind. Select me a further three down. A gap of maybe ten lengths to Fly Messenger Fly as we have a strung out field. Three more to Lana Vecati and delay the game races at the back. Seven sixteenths of a mile to run, and Sunny T and Chippy has now shaken loose and has that lead and slips away by some six, seven lengths as they go flashing past the three. She's my friend beginning to tie up, caught and overtaken by Gilbert going in pursuit. Great Wayne races with Select Me as the leaders will come into the lane. Fly Messenger flies next, and Lana Vicati forget delay the game. It's all Sunny T and Chippy in complete command at the top of the lane, approaching the final three sixteenth. The rider, though, remains a busy man and now calls for the stick in the right hand, a crack or two, and Sunny T and Chippy continues to roll on with a furlong to run. Gilbert trying to battle for a minor share. Fly Messenger Fly has run on and now grabs second, but it's Sunny T and Chippy beginning to tie up just a little bit, but looks to have done more than enough. And Sunny T and Chippy and terrific Tevin Foster will win it by maybe four. Fly Messenger Fly ahead of Lionel Vicati, then Gilbert, select me. The anti-post favorite Sunny T and Chippy for trainer Spencer Chong takes the Heroes Day Stakes Trophy with jockey Tevin Foster in the saddle. The most anticipated event on Monday's card was the Philip Fianney Gold Cup race, run in honor of arguably one of Jamaica's most decorated and talented trainers to feel the horse at Kimanos Park. Field in line, now they're off for the Gold Cup. Ability just misses it at the start. As they run the back stretch and head toward the six in the Gold Cup, Rajon the pilot sex the fraction. The speedy She's My Destiny now cuts into that lead as they leave the six. The select separates them. Mahogany races up next. I've got Magic is racing wide of these. I am Fred in the red is five lengths off that lead. A gap of five or more opens up to Perfect Peru, joined by Ability. Down the back stretch, they go in the Gold Cup. They make their way now 
toward the half mile. Rojo and the pilot will get there first. Shadowed by Mahogany. I've got Magic racing out three wide. She's my destiny now. Asked to go by the rider. I am Fred is still in the chance needing to find four and a half lengths. Ability now makes some progress. And the late running perfect brew at the back of the field. They're blasted past the three in the gold cup. They're coming toward the final five sixteenth. And Mahogany the big horse now picks up that lead and is asked to sprint away from them. It is Mahogany coming into the lane. Mahogany pushed out a quarter of a mile to run in the Gold Cup and Mahogany is in charge with 316th to run. Can they catch Mahogany? You'll have to falter badly as Mahogany comes to the furlong pole with a clear lead. She's my destiny running on from behind. Mahogany driven to the back. She's my destiny. The filly beginning to close up. Mahogany under pressure. She's my destiny charging forward under Ramon the pair. They're meters from the wire. She's my destiny beats Mahogany in the Gold Cup. Then ability perfect brew. I am Fred and Rajon the pilot go by together. I've got magic at the back. Jason Acosta's five-year-old chestnut mirror, She's My Destiny, steals the spotlight in what was a nail-biting finish in the last two furlongs, edging Mahogany by a length and a half right on the post. Our final review race from the Heroes Day card was the ninth and final, the third running of the Kilowatt Cup, a restricted allowance event covering a distance of 1,400 meters. Glittering star from the seven box was deemed a late non-starter. Late scratch glittering star. They're off and racing in the kilowatt cup, missing the break at the back of the field. Waterman John. They go towards the uh, passing the six. And it is easy peasy that makes the lead. Easy peasy from Sheer to Ben right there too. Right between horses that slam dunk and slam dunk narrowly points from from Sheer to Ben passing the five. Then comes easy peasy behind those. Uh, that's Money Miser, also on the rail and recovering. That's uh, Super Alex. Behind Super Alex, that's all, all for love as they pass the fourth. They're heading toward the three in the kilowatt, and it is from Sheer to Ben who assumes the lead. From Slam Dunk racing in second, Money Miser making a dangerous move on the outside. And also coming on, that's easy peasy, but from Sheer to Ben kicks away once again. Also coming on. That is a Money Miser from Sheer to Ben in front of Money Miser, all for love. A wall of horses chasing from Sheer to Ben. Also coming on, that's a all for love, but now Money Miser has grabbed hold off from Sheer to Ben. Money Miser, Wow How is coming on the rail. It's Money Miser in front at the furlong pole. Wow How begins to come forward, but Money Miser is not quitting, and Money Miser begins to pull away from them. Money Miser in front and will hold from Sheer to Ben by about two lengths. Money Miser beat from Sheer to Ben. Wow, beat Wow How, I should say. Then comes All for Love, Super Alex, and from Sheer to Ben back in fifth. Jockey Shamari Muir registers a second win on the day aboard the wanted to favorite Money Miser, beating the fast finishing Wow How in second, All for Love in third, and the Super Alex who finished fourth. Well, that does it for another exciting edition of Caymanus Park Highlight Show. See you next time.